October 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapter 50 from the Old Testament. The Lord spoke concerning Babylon and the land of Babylonia through the prophet Jeremiah. Announce the news among the nations, proclaim it, signal for people to pay attention, declare the news, do not hide it, say Babylon will be captured, Bel will be put to shame. Marduk will be dismayed. Babylon's idols will be put to shame. Her disgusting images will be dismayed. For a nation from the north will attack Babylon. It will lay her land waste. People and animals will flee out of it. No one will inhabit it. When that time comes, says the Lord, the people of Israel and Judah will return to the land together. They will come back with tears of repentance as they seek the Lord, their God. They will ask the way to Zion. They will turn their faces toward it. They will come and bind themselves to the Lord in a lasting covenant that will never be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have allowed them to go astray. They have wandered around in the mountains. They have roamed from one mountain and hill to another. They have forgotten their resting place. All who encountered them devoured them. Their enemies who did this said, We are not liable for punishment, for those people have sinned against the Lord, their true pasture. They have sinned against the Lord in whom their ancestors trusted. People of Judah, get out of Babylon quickly. Leave the land of Babylonia, be the first to depart. Be like the male goats that lead the herd. For I will rouse into action and bring against Babylon a host of mighty nations from the land of the north. They will set up their battle lines against her. They will come from the north and capture her. Their arrows will be like a skilled soldier who does not return from the battle empty-handed. Babylonia will be plundered. Those who plunder it will take all they want, says the Lord. People of Babylonia, you plundered my people that made you happy and glad. You frolic about like calves in a pasture. Your joyous sounds are like the neighs of a stallion. But Babylonia will be put to great shame. The land where you were born will be disgraced. Indeed, Babylonia will become the least important of all nations. It will become a dry and barren desert. After I vent my wrath on it, Babylon will be uninhabited. It will be totally desolate. All who pass by will be filled with horror and will hiss out their scorn because of all the disasters that have happened to it. Take up your battle positions all around Babylon, all you soldiers who are armed with bows. Shoot all your arrows at her, do not hold any back, for she has sinned against the Lord. Shout the battle cry from all around the city. She will throw up her hands and surrender. Her towers will fall. Her walls will be torn down, because I, the Lord, am wreaking revenge. Take out your vengeance on her. Do to her as she has done. Kill all the farmers who sow the seed in the land of Babylon. Kill all those who wield the sickle at harvest time. Let all the foreigners return to their own people. Let them hurry back to their own lands to escape destruction by that enemy army. The people of Israel are like scattered sheep which lions have chased away. First the king of Assyria devoured them. Now last of all, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has gnawed their bones. So I, the Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, say, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land just as I punish the king of Assyria, but I will restore the flock of Israel to their own pasture. They will graze on Mount Carmel and the land of Bashan. They will eat until they are full on the hills of Ephraim and the land of Gilead. When that time comes, no guilt will be found in Israel. No sin will be found in Judah, for I will forgive those of them I have allowed to survive. I, the Lord, affirm it. The Lord says, Attack the land of Marathaim and the people who live in Pecod. Pursue, kill, and completely destroy them. Do just as I have commanded you. The noise of battle can be heard in the land of Babylonia. There is the sound of great destruction. Babylon hammered the whole world to pieces, but see how that hammer has been broken and shattered. 
See what an object of horror Babylon has become among the nations. I set a trap for you, Babylon. You were caught before you knew it. You fought against me, so you were found and captured. I have opened up the place where my weapons are stored. I have brought out the weapons for carrying out my wrath. For I, the Lord God, who rules over all, have work to carry out in the land of Babylonia. Come from far away and attack Babylonia. Open up the places where she stores her grain. Pile her up in ruins. Destroy her completely. Do not leave anyone alive. Kill all her soldiers. Let them be slaughtered. They are doomed, for their day of reckoning has come, the time for them to be punished. Listen, fugitives and refugees are coming from the land of Babylon. They are coming to Zion to declare there how the Lord our God is getting revenge, getting revenge for what they have done to his temple. Call for archers to come against Babylon. Summon against her all who draw the bow. Set up camp all around the city. Do not allow anyone to escape. Pay her back for what she has done. Do to her what she has done to others. For she has proudly defied me, the Holy One of Israel. So her young men will fall in her city squares. All her soldiers will be destroyed at that time, says the Lord. Listen, I am opposed to you, you proud city, says the Lord God, who rules over all. Indeed, your day of reckoning has come, the time when I will punish you. You will stumble and fall, you proud city. No one will help you get up. I will set fire to your towns. It will burn up everything that surrounds you. The Lord who rules over all says the people of Israel are oppressed. So too are the people of Judah. All those who took them captive are holding them prisoners. They refuse to set them free. But the one who will rescue them is strong. He is known as the Lord who rules over all. He will strongly champion their cause. As a result, he will bring peace and rest to the earth, but trouble and turmoil to the people who inhabit Babylonia. Destructive forces will come against the Babylonians, says the Lord. They will come against the people who inhabit Babylonia, against her leaders and her men of wisdom. Destructive forces will come against her false prophets. They will be shown to be fools. Destructive forces will come against her soldiers. They will be filled with terror. Destructive forces will come against her horses and her chariots. Destructive forces will come against all the foreign troops within her. They will be as frightened as women. Destructive forces will come against her treasures. They will be taken away as plunder. A drought will come upon her land. Her rivers and canals will be dried up. All of this will happen because her land is filled with idols. Her people act like madmen because of those idols they fear. Therefore, desert creatures and jackals will live there. Ostriches will dwell in it too. But no people will ever live there again. No one will dwell there for all time to come. I will destroy Babylonia just like I did Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring towns. No one will live there. No human being will settle in it, says the Lord. Look, an army is about to come from the north, a mighty nation, and many kings are stirring into action in faraway parts of the earth. Its soldiers are armed with bows and spears. They are cruel and show no mercy. They sound like the roaring sea as they ride forth on their horses, lined up in formation like men going into battle. They are coming against you, fair Babylon. The king of Babylon will become paralyzed with fear when he hears news of their coming. Anguish will grip him, agony like that of a woman giving birth to a baby. A lion coming up from the thick undergrowth along the Jordan scatters the sheep in the pasture land around it. So too I will chase the Babylonians off of their land. Then I will appoint over it whomever I choose, for there is no one like me. There is no one who can call me to account. There is no ruler that can stand up against me. So listen to what I, the Lord, have planned against Babylon, what I intend to do to the people who inhabit the land of Babylonia. Their little ones will be dragged off. I will completely destroy their land because of what they have done. The people of the earth will quake when they hear Babylon has been captured. Her cries of anguish will be heard by the other nations. God 
God, I was reading um, about Charles Spurgeon, one of my favorite preachers that you put here on earth. And it was a quote he said, he's talking about Satan, and he says, He can make men dance upon the brink of hell as though they were on the verge of heaven. And I think about that quote when I read stories in the Bible about Babylon, um, not just in Jeremiah, but specifically talking about Jeremiah, when Babylon thought that they just had it all going on. Uh, the siege took a little while, but they won and they were able to plunder uh, and take all these people back to uh, Babylon with them. And it almost seemed to them like they had your approval. So kind of back to the quote, the on the verge of heaven, but the brink of hell. They really didn't have your so-called approval. You weren't having them do that uh, for them. You were having them do that in your big plan. They just couldn't see the rest of the picture. You needed to discipline your people. Uh, you needed them to be away from their homeland, uh, in this case for 70 years. And then you came back around in the story to complete your full picture. And you said, now I'm going to bring my people back. I'm going to bring my remnant back to their promised land. I'm going to forgive them. And now you're going to be destroyed for taking part in this. And a lot of people get confused by uh, this whole, they did exactly what you want them to do and now you're going to punish them. Uh, but I, I get it. I, that's probably one of the reasons I love these stories is we try and think in terms of us, of what we think is fair, what we think is right. We don't stop and realize this amazing sovereign Lord that we serve who is right and correct and just in everything that he does. And we honestly think that we can judge your actions. <laughs> uh, and I know that we can't. Um, but in this particular situation, you allowed people who were already worshiping idols and you, you said, as you say many places in the Bible, if you're going to do that, I'm just going to let you do that. And by the way, I'm going to use your choices to help what I need to get done in this earth. And I think about that in my own life. There's many times when I know I'm doing your will. Okay, maybe not many. There's sometimes <laughs> I know I'm doing your will. And I know that there's many more times that I should be doing your will. But I also read these stories and apply them to my own life and realize that there's many times where you allow me to continue sinning because it's part of your bigger picture. And you, you will use my sin and my choice to continue to sin as part of your bigger picture better picture for the world. And to me, that's absolutely amazing that you can use something that is bad, a bad choice in my life, uh, completely against you. And yet you can still make it good in the totality of the picture of what you need it to look like. I know that your choice would be for me to not sin. I completely get that. Just like you would choose for Babylon back then to have become part of your nation to have uh, gotten rid of all their idols and uh, had praised and worshiped you, but they didn't. They continued to sin. And so you said, fine, um, not only am I going to allow you to take part in teaching my people a lesson, but at the end of it, I'm going to punish you. And I know at the end of my disobedience, even though you've used it for your greater glory, uh, at the end of it, be there's a punishment, there's a discipline that happens uh, for that choice of sin. God, uh, allow us today to realize that we may be thinking that we're getting off scot-free with something. We may be thinking we're getting away with something. We may feel like we're dancing upon the verge of heaven because of how smooth sailing everything's going. But allow our hearts to be put into check of are we really doing that? Or are you simply allowing us to choose a life of sin to be used ultimately for your glory. That if we're going to choose that, fine. You're just going to wash your hands of us and allow us to continue down that path because you've already tried to explain to us that those choices aren't right. You explained to Israel and Judah numerous times that those choices weren't right. Um, but they were insistent upon them happening. And so you allowed them to continue down that path to the point of being uh, taken captive into Babylon. How incredible that in this passage of Jeremiah that you bring them back. You not only discipline them, but then you bring them back and you say, 
my people are coming back to the the land that I gave them and I'm going to forgive them. You know that amazing grace and compassion that you just swoop in with even while you have to discipline us. Uh, that that overwhelming drowning in in your love and your grace God that just comes in as a tidal wave in these situations we can even see it so clearly as you're giving Jeremiah uh, these prophecies to share with other people I'm going to bring my people back they're going to be in punishment for 70 years but I'm going to bring them back I'm going to bring them back to the land and I'm going to completely forgive them of everything that they've done because hopefully they've learned their lesson God, your love is so big and so deep and so wide that I can't even begin to grasp it. But I love stories like this where I can get little glimpses and facets of just how powerful that love is that you have for us. That you would allow us to head down into a wrong path, even though it must be breaking your heart, knowing full well that at the end of it, you can help that path turn our life back around, turn it back to our eyes on you um, and the amazing plans that you have for our life. God, allow discernment to happen in our hearts today. Allow us to really truly think if we are being used by the devil for our sinful life or are we doing your will and doing it with radically changed hearts that get super excited at how powerful you were love and your grace and your mercy are in everyone's life in your son's name i pray amen